Greetings to those who watch below. It's Friday, so of course, that means it's time for another stop on our tour of America. Today we're heading to the West Coast in California. But before we start, I'd like to say thank you to Steffi Ray, Wicked Witch, Lisa Watts, Lefty Kim, Irish Creepypasta Guy, Jess Black Curtain, and Christina Groves for being those who dwell below. Our exclusive channel membership that you can check out in the description box. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, click in the notification bell so you don't miss a video. But now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Unexplained Hauntings by Designates Mon. It was the year 2005, and I was expecting our second child when my fiancé, son and I, decided to move closer to my mum in Gustine, California. It was an older home out in the middle of the country. We had been living there for about a month or so when I started seeing things. Weird shadows out the corner of my eye and hearing strange noises. My son's toys would play on their own. Balls would bounce, unexplained knocking within the house. Doors would open when I shut them. Baby monitors would pick up a strong loud static in the middle of the night, almost every night, with a voice talking and it would immediately go away as soon as I would get up and go check my son's room. I would have messages on the answering machine where my phone did not ring, all static. My fiancé worked during the day, and when I would tell him, he thought I was crazy, and I was just tired from being pregnant. It got to the point where my son would wake up screaming in the middle of the night, and would not stay in his room alone to play during the day. As months had turned into a year living in that house, we now had two children. I started feeling stronger presences, like someone watching and following me when I was washing dishes or laundry, caring for the children, or anything of the sort. I even started hearing footsteps around the house, to where it led to one night when the footsteps were behind me as I left my kids' room from checking on them as I walked back to my bedroom. I jumped back into bed, and immediately felt a presence of someone sitting on the foot of the bed when no one was there. I finally had enough of living there when it started turning physical. One night, I woke up and caught a glimpse of a boy standing at the foot of the bed staring at me. I immediately sat up, and he was gone. My son had slipped into bed with us that same night, and was kind of hanging off the edge of the bed. When I went to pull him closer to me, scared thinking that I'd just seen a ghost, he woke up screaming, No! Stop it! You're hurting me! As he grabbed his face, screaming as if he was in pain. This had woken my fiancé up as well, and he had to help me calm our son down. I had to pull my son's hands off his face, and when I did, he had fresh scratches as if someone had scratched his face. A couple of days after the incident, I had a dream that I woke up to a loud noise, like a chair or something was dragging on the kitchen floor. I got up to see what the noise was, and opened my bedroom door, and right there in front of me was an older woman. She had long hair, was dressed in a long black dress, and she appeared to be floating in the air, just staring at me. A few feet behind her, I caught a glimpse of the same little boy, dressed in a white collared shirt and black pants, staring at me as well. The woman stared at me for only a few seconds, and then started screaming loudly as she lunged at me. This woman had gone through me. I could not move or breathe. I was frozen. I felt lifeless. Tears rolled down my eyes as I tried calling my fiancé's name but no words or sounds would come out. I started praying in my head, and finally got enough strength to walk backwards slowly to my bed and sit down. I woke up, finding myself in the same position, sitting as I did in my dream. It felt so real, the way it felt when she went through me, her anger I felt, her scream was just terrifying. I woke my fiancé up, and cried to him of what just happened. I did not sleep the rest of the night, in fear I would see this woman again. I could not live there any longer. We finally moved away from that house. My mum, however, still lives across the way from the house, and she too is now experiencing strange noises and unexplained scratches at her house. I don't know what happened on that property or in the houses, but whatever did, it was not pretty. Pacheco Passes Ghost in Black Robes by C.C. C. Merlin. Years ago, 
driving back from Sacramento to Monterey, I went over Pachico Pass, and I saw a small car broken down on the side as I was coming down the hill. There were kids in the back seat playing under a sheet, and there was a lady on the passenger side with the door open. I felt bad for not stopping, and was giving myself a hard time, telling myself that if I saw anyone else, that I would have to stop, when I suddenly saw a priest walking down the right side of the road. He was wearing a black robe, and it reminded me of that character from SNL back in the 80s, Father Guido Sarducci. I figured since it was a priest, there was no question that I had to pull over and help. When I pulled up, he looked old, with his face all wrinkly and burnt, like I remember the old homeless guys living under Monterey Wharf looked. His clothes looked tattered, like he had gone through some serious roughness, and he looked very mad. When I asked him if he needed help, he mumbled something, but I couldn't understand. I told him they might hassle him for walking along the road, and then he turned to look right at me and spoke clearly, so you're trying to help me. I told him I had thought he might need a ride, and he asked me if I had seen a woman walking, but I told him no. I thought this was strange, since it was an odd place to take a walk, but I wished him luck and started again onto the road. I looked back in the rear view and didn't see him though. I remember thinking that was a little strange, because there was nowhere out there to hide, but I kind of just ignored it until years later, when a friend posted an article about ghosts in central California and it described a ghost in a black road upon Pachico Pass, and it hit me. After a bunch of research, I found a forum where people were talking about experiences they had, and several of them described a small car on the side of the road with boys playing in the back seat under a sheet, and a lady getting something out of the passenger side. The Charman Like most such places, OJ California has a unique culture all its own, and there are more than a few myths and legends. One of the spookiest stories told is that of the Charman. Of course, there's usually a grain of truth to every story. In the case of the Charman, most people would probably prefer that not to be the case. He's downright creepy. He's grotesque. Even a little dangerous. This is one of those stories that is repeated so often that it almost can't help but be real. The people of OJ, California would certainly say it's real. They'll swear up and down that the Charman is out there. OJ is a hot valley in one of the driest parts of the state. There's scrub brush everywhere, and long story short, it's prone to wildfires. One such fire in 1948 was particularly large and burned a large portion of the valley. Due to the isolation of the area and the limitations of the times, some families had to wait for days for the authorities to come offer aid and assistance. In the hills to the south of the town, there was an isolated cabin. A man lived there with his son and they mostly kept to themselves. The cabin was directly in the path of the fire. Their house was consumed by the flames, and the father was burned to death. The son survived, but barely. He was practically unrecognisable as a human being, a smoking wreck of a man, burned all over. It's amazing he survived. He did survive, though, and the pain must have been unimaginable. And as sometimes happens in such circumstances, his mind snapped. Nobody knows quite what happened, but when the police and firemen arrived days after the fire, they found a gruesome scene. The father had been flayed, his skin removed from his body, peeled like he was a piece of fruit. The man's body was hanging from a nearby tree, and he was quite, quite dead. Drawing their guns, the police immediately found out to search for the perpetrator. It didn't take long. Hearing an inhuman laboured wheezing from a nearby brush that had escaped the flames, the officers converged. Suddenly, something bolted out. It was the sun, a mass of charred flesh, somehow impossibly able to still move. Gagging at the smell, the officers lost their conviction and the sun escaped. He ran into the hills and that was the last time anyone saw him up close. He had become the Charman of OJ, California. People say the Charman is still there. He must be ancient now, but it seems his insane rage has given him strength and life beyond the mortal. 
Or perhaps he really did die in that fire many years ago. Maybe what we know as the Charman is a ghost, reenacting the horrific circumstances of its death. So what does this tormented soul do? It seems he wants more skins. Human skins. To replace his own, perhaps. The Charman most frequently lurks around the very rural Creek Road. There's a campground in the area known as Camp Comfort, which has gained something of a reputation for its hauntings. The Charman has been known to stalk the camp at night, not quite brave enough to enter the tents. He's crafty and picks his targets carefully. He shies away from large groups and moving cars, but he's not shy about approaching if he thinks he can take you. Harassing stopped cars is a favourite pastime of his. He loves nothing more than finding a few unlucky travellers stuck on the side of the road. Helpless, stranded, their skin ripe for the reaping. The charman will leap onto the car, pounding and scratching trying to get in. Some daredevils like to exploit this. They drive out, way out after dark, stop on the side of the road and turn off the car, and the lights too if they dare, and then wait. The Charman, so locals say, will come after a time. Phantom Vehicle by June Moonchild 69 In August of 2006, I saw a phantom vehicle on Big Tajunga Canyon Road in Sunland, California. It was late evening around 10pm. My friend and I stopped by his home so he could pick up some of his belongings. I parked my jeep in a small space on the side of the two-lane highway while I waited alone in the car for him to return. I was waiting for maybe 20 minutes. I was sitting facing oncoming cars as they were coming down and out of the forest. There were not many cars passing by at this time. Directly, and not very far in front of me, was a sharp bend in the road, which went around the mountainside. I, of course, could clearly see any car's headlights as they came driving around and down the road. I could also see cars approaching from behind me, and their headlights, as they were going up and into the canyon. This highway is extremely narrow with sharp curves, without any street lamps of any kind, and so, pitch black dark at night, with next to no visibility, it is a notorious highway for being treacherous for careless drivers, even during daylight hours. No one can possibly drive without headlights. Yet, to my utter astonishment, I began to barely see the shape of a car coming down the road around the bend in front of me, without any headlights. My first thoughts were that this person must have been desperate to try and get out of the canyon like this. Maybe they had trouble with their car's lights, but were still attempting to drive this impossible way. Perhaps they were hunched over the dashboard or something. I couldn't believe it, and I watched it drive right by my car. When it passed by, directly parallel to the side of my car, I looked to see who was driving, and I saw that no one was in the car. It was moving very slowly, and without any sounds of a motor or wheels, and like a silhouette, practically see-through. It looked like an old and greyish coloured four-door sedan-type vehicle. I just kept staring at it in amazement, and looked back to see if maybe it even had rear brake lights. No, it didn't either. Then it disappeared like all the other cars, into the darkness of the highway. My friend returned to me in the jeep just a few minutes later, so I asked him if he had ever seen the car without any lights go by him as he was walking back, since it seemed to be moving so slowly. He said that no, he had not. So I quickly told him why I had just seen, and I told him I was going to drive as fast as I could to see if I could catch up with it. I spun the car around and raced down the road, which has no exits or turn-offs the rest of the way out the canyon. I figured I had a pretty good chance, yet we never did see it anywhere, or any other car like it. After this happened, I never went to stay the night up in that forest again. Mass of Blackness by Raven's Litany My name is Tracy, and I've had several experiences with ghostly beings starting back at age 5. I'm now 39, but the most recent, most violent, sent me running from Southern California to Northern California. Renting a room in a house of a friend's ex-husband, I was having trouble sleeping ever since I moved in 
and related it to stress at the time. I was lucky enough to meet two people whom I quickly became friends with. We all shared an interest in ghosts, ESP, and anything paranormal. One night we decided to go to a park, one that I had never been to and won't go to again. We drove as far as we could into the park, but the gate was closed to cars, so we parked in the cul-de-sac type road and started to walk to what my friend said was a small stream towards the middle of the park. We started to walk down a small hill on a moonless night. It was very dark. I was in front about 15 feet of my two friends when I felt a tapping on my right shoulder. Turning around to see what my friend Doug wanted, as it hadn't felt like a woman's hand, I saw to my left a figure on a hill that looked like a Native American scout or lookout type person. The fact that my friends were nowhere near me to tap me on the shoulder sent chills through me, but I kept walking. I was in good spirits, if you'll pardon the pun, and told myself that the ghost stories we shared were just playing games on my mind. The next part I hardly remember, I was seeing what seemed to be a shadow moving in front of me. I started to look around for a light source that could be creating it, and found none. I kept walking, and the shadow grew larger and larger, and was now looking more like a mass of blackness than a shadow, and actually coming towards me. Needless to say, my mind just wouldn't accept it as anything other than a shadow. I hadn't heard of shadow people at this time. The next thing that happened, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies. I was caught in this blackness. I had taken a step forward, and my foot never reached the ground. Something had me by the throat. Just my windpipe, and I couldn't breathe. My friends saw this and came running down the hill, and stopped halfway down with a fright. Doug yelled to Jill to go to the car and get it started for our getaway. He ran to me, grabbed me, and half dragging, half lifting me, got me to the car, where Jill was standing dumbstruck by what she saw. Before we had started down the hill, we had teased her that her car needed a good washing, but by now, we really wished she had, because covering her car was what appeared to be satanic symbols written in the dust and dirt. They were ruin symbols, that had been reversed mirror images of what we see normally. Doug yelled at her to hurry. I still hadn't been able to breathe, and he was getting very scared. Finally, we got into the car and drove as fast as possible to put as much space between us and the park. We pulled over, and I got out taking my first real big breath of fresh air. And that's where I finally got a clearer memory again. Doug and Jill said that the whole time that we were driving, I was talking channeling something about an old native woman. It scared them more than the experience at the park. It didn't stop until we got out of the car and Doug had put his hands into clean soil. We got back into the car and went to the nearest open restaurant to talk about what happened and calm down. We still have no idea what really happened or what caused the events of the evening. When we went back to the car from the restaurant, feeling calmer, hoping that our imaginations had gotten away with us, we saw the symbols on the car, and knew that it had really happened. Not to mention that the next day, I had bruises on my windpipe, exactly where I had felt them the night before. Finger marks as if I had been choked by the windpipe alone, not around my neck, as a normal human would attempt. The next day Doug said he had a friend that exercised evil entities and things like that, and he would have him check out my house for any lingering effects. Well, his friend did come over, and right under my bedroom window was a horrid smelling mud patch where nothing would grow, much to the bewilderment of my landlord. He asked if Jill and I would leave them to cleanse the house. We went to the store, and upon arriving back, waited for the boys in the front of the house in the car. Both of us were watching the house as if something was going to happen. Realising this, we laughed at ourselves, and then looked back to the house for any sign of the boys, when we saw a bright flash of pinkish light over the house, not once, but twice. A few moments later, the boys came from behind the house and told us they were successful. I asked how they knew it was gone, to which they replied, Did you see the flash of light over the house? Yes, we answered. That was the ghost trying to come back in after being cast away. I've put a protective spell on you and the house. She won't be coming back again. And she never did.
Hi guys, thank you so much for listening to today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting that notification bell. And of course, please feel free to share any of the videos on the channel on your social media. So, until next time, sleep tight.